implement that in um, in a class of child learners, I think that they could get it. I think they could they could get behind it and, and make it work for them. Um, I agree. I could see that uh, being applied in that uh, lower level. Yeah, for sure. So just, you know, you wouldn't want to get into like really, really tricky and more complicated strategies, but, you know, something too metacognitive. But I think for a lot of learners that would, that would work out, child learners, that could work out great. Mm -hmm. um, we see larger effects in lab, lab studies as opposed to classroom studies. And that makes sense as well because, you know, the classrooms we know are kind of messy places. There's just a lot going on in the classroom. And the lab, the researchers usually have more control, right? So we get large effects usually in labs. And then we get large effects, a lot, much large effects with intermediate and advanced learners over beginner learners. And I think that also makes sense just because at beginner levels, participants are usually, you know, they're sometimes working so hard just to, just to basically process the language that taking on additional activities or energies or efforts might be too much for them. So I think at intermediate levels, it makes sense that among intermediate and advanced learners that we'd see a greater effect for strategy instruction. Um, looking across different types of treatments, um, we see large effects for metacognitive strategies where we're like, you know, training learners how to monitor and regulate their, their, um, their activities with the language. We see large effects for longer treatments, okay? And so the implication there is that we, we shouldn't just, you know, we shouldn't just go for these like one shot, one day, little just mention it offhand kind of strategy instruction treatments. We should have them sustained and give learners opportunities over time to practice and engage with the strategies. And then we see um, also larger effects for, it seemed like a lot of the studies just taught a single strategy. And so I compared just the studies that taught one strategy versus more than one strategy. And the ones that were most effective were the ones that just taught a single strategy. And so, th so for that, I mean, that would imply to me that we need to be really, really selective about which strategies we teach. It's not that we can only teach one strategy, but I think we need to be really careful in choosing strategies that are at the right level uh, and not just, you know, not just giving a menu of 15 or 20 strategies and saying, Hey, let's just, you know, go crazy and learn all these. No, no, let's, Let's focus, figure out what it is that learners need and what's going to help them the most, and then work on developing that strategy or two or three. And then last, um, looking across different skill areas, we see that um, it's generally pretty effective with, with speaking and reading, a little bit less so with vocab and writing. Um, listening, really, the results are all over the place, but may even be negative or close to zero. Um, the results for strategy instruction and pronunciation are really large, but this is based on just two studies, so it's not quite as stable. Um, but, uh, and, and same thing with, with grammar and general proficiency, that really small set of studies there, so we don't have much to say. But we see that it is generally effective across all these main skill areas. The only, the only sort of unsure one there is um, listening, and that we know is, if you guys have um, taught a lot of listening, listening is just a really difficult skill. There's so many things going on simultaneously. But with all, pretty much all skills, we see um, good effects for strategy instruction. So, so I'll, do, I'll end here, and, and I don't want to take the whole class, but just to say that, um, to conclude and say that, yes, strategy instruction can be effective. The results, the evidence is really overwhelming to me, looking across all the studies in this area that, for the effects of strategy instruction. Um, but in order to do this and do this effectively, I think we also, it's not like you just walk in and decide on your own totally a priori, what's gonna be the right kind of strategies, like anything. I mean, we, we talk about doing needs analysis. We need to diagnose and figure out what kind of strategies the learners, your students already use, already know how to use, and then make sure that you're providing them with strategies that are um, appropriate to their level and their interests and their needs. Um, I'd also add that we wanna integrate it into the curriculum and not engage in strategy instruction as a kind of one shot, one time thing, but integrated more and uh, recycled throughout a term or a semester. Um, of course, um, taking care to provide level and course appropriate strategies and then not providing too many strategies, right? So not overwhelming them with tons of things to worry about and think about as they're learning. It's, we know how hard it is to learn another language and we wanna provide uh, a select few and a, a carefully selected set of strategies rather than uh, a whole battery of strategies. So those are my recommendations, um, but I'd say uh, definitely worth adopting or attempting to adopt in, uh, in your current or future classes. And um, I'll stop there. If anybody has any uh, questions or anything, happy to talk more. Otherwise, I'll let you guys uh, get on with the rest of your discussion. 
Um, Yoshio and Ross, and I know that uh, you're both uh, using so many strategies in your teaching now. Um, could you see uh, using uh, teaching students uh, to use some of their own strategies in an autonomous method? It's it's a shift. I'm going to say one more thing. Uh, it's a shift, I think, to think about teaching students how to use their own strategies versus uh, the teacher using the strategies. That that that's a it's a, a shift in thinking. I think. Am I? Am I yeah. saying? That Certainly, yeah. And and um, but you know, yeah. We want. I think what we all want is more autonomous learners. I mean, we can only do so much. To, to get our students to learn and use the language in meaningful and appropriate and accurate ways. Um, but I, you know, wouldn't it be ideal if our students could be more autonomous and take on a greater share or greater autonomy independence for their own language learning and use? And that's what strategies enable them to do. And you know, whether or not they take those on and implement them into their everyday use and study of the language, you, know, you can't make them, but you can, at the very least, I think we can provide them with the tools and that's what the strategies give them. It's very empowering, I think, for our learners to give the strategies to them to take away from the classroom. That's the hope, yeah. And the, the evidence is strong that that, that can be done. Yashio and Rossin, what do you think? Would you be able to um, pass on those strategies to students to have them carry out from your classroom the ability to um, work on language learning? Sure, sure. I was actually thinking about the history class. Um, when I was a student and also when I was teaching, um, the keyword method will work with history class, you know, because I didn't get, mm, I, I've never taken a history class in the U.S., but when I was taking a history class in Japan, we have to do lots of memorization, lots of numbers, but I always use a keyword method. And also, when I teach Japanese and sometimes English, I use um, skimming all the time. Sure. So yeah. we can save time. Sure, effective strategy. And we all do that, you know, kind of automatically, especially in our first languages. But a lot of students, you know, they, they don't necessarily in automatically transfer the strategies that they have from their L1 directly over to the L2. And so sometimes it's like, oh, wait, I can, I can do this in my L2 too. And they don't, sometimes they don't think about it as much. So sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, getting them to grab, to realize the strategies that they do automatically in their L1 and then transfer them into the L2. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, I agree with what you mentioned about the strategies. How can we help the students that we can pass them, like uh, support them? Uh, last year, and how can the students use them? But also, I what I did is I provide them, uh, like offer them how can they help me to design the curriculum. For example, uh, our school is uh, depending on the unit as uh, others know, and uh, I told them that this is statement of inquiry, and here are the inquiry questions. So, what do you think? What kind of activity that you like to involve in this unit? So they start sharing their ideas and then we design the curriculum. Oh, that's great. I love it. I love it. So talk about building autonomy, right? And, and sort of ownership over the class. Uh, I think that's a, that's a great idea. And, and having them engaged in that way, I bet, I bet it worked really well, yeah? Yeah. That's great. Fun. Um, I wanted to ask a Go ahead. I wanted to ask a question. Oh, hello. Welcome. Hello, Shinari. Yeah, I've been here, but I think I came a little bit late. It's okay. Yeah, I when I, I met with the keyword method, the strategy where you were t talking about the frog and all those things. I really love those um those methods in, uh, a lot, and I think it can be helpful for for learners. What I wanted to ask because I came a little bit late. So, how can this method be used to make students of, um to create that autonomy in terms of learning the second language? Well, the whole idea is that, um, yeah, that the learners, if we teach them the strategies to, uh, the strategies that they can use in L2 learning or L2 use, that they're not so dependent on the teacher, that they can, 
you know, they can get themselves out of difficult situations in terms of using the language or how to, you know, you can, they can learn more on their own. Right. And, and we, I mean, of course, we're always there for them, but anytime that we can lead them to learn more without the guidance of an instructor, I think that's a good thing, right? That they can have the class time and have the homework, but also be learning more. So imagine like, you know, if you imagine, you know, how much more, if they could, you know, if they could, read all any text that you give them and get more out of it. You know, you can assi- give a reading assignment um, and they're going to get a certain amount out of that reading assignment in terms of language use and, and vocabulary and um, reading comprehension. But if they, if they could engage with the text in a way that would be, that would give them deeper comprehension and greater reading fluency, for example, that's what we're aiming for, right? So teaching them ways to use the language in more independent, autonomous ways. Um, when they're not with uh, teacher support, for example. Okay. That's the, the sort you. of idea. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks. And I am wondering, um, do you have a, a handbook of these strategies? How do we, um, how do we find these strategies? Great, great question. Um, you know, there, there's been lots and lots written out about it. Um, I... I actually have here, I didn't, I didn't include this. I have another slide that I cut out from um, my notes. I thought I'd just for the, sake, for the sake of time, I thought I don't want to take too much of you guys' time. There are some examples here. Um, so there's an example of the keyword, metacognitive strategy instruction. There's tons in these studies, um, semantic mapping. I mean, that's sort of a kind of reading or writing strategy. Um, exploring, you know, I said exploring students' perceptions and strategy use as a kind of diagnostic. Um, but there's actually, a, um, and there's been lots of books as well. There's actually a book being, to, being put together right now um, by uh, a woman named V. Harris, another woman named Anna Shamo. And uh, that's been, this study of mine, this meta-analysis I talked about, that's going to be in that book, um, one of the chapters in the book. But there's been loads of other stuff, and I'm happy to send out materials. If you guys, you know, I, um, it, yeah, if you go to my, if, if you go to the website that, um, that MJ put there before, um, you can find the bibliography, but if anyone wants more materials, you can find tons and tons there, but if I can send out any of those to you guys, just let me know. And I'm happy to, um, to send over some articles or, or whatever might be of interest. Um, if you would like to send them to me, I will share them in our next sure. class because I'm really excited about, uh, your research. And um, I think, um, I, I bet we'll hear more. Great. I, I'm hoping. Sure, I'll send over some stuff. Okay. More okay. questions? Well, I'll There's, let you guys, oh yeah, Rossin, go ahead, sorry. I'm all, uh, only just to thank you because uh, you shared uh, so much uh, ideas about maybe it will help us in the future. Thank oh, thanks. Much. That's nice. Thanks so much. Yeah, this, is, this has been fun. Thanks for, uh, for chatting with me, guys. And p- please uh, feel free to visit again because um, th- it's very nice to uh, have um, information from all sorts of different sources. Yeah, yeah, I will. I hope so. I will, I will stop my share here, MJ, and I will close out. But great to meet you guys. Have a great class and a great rest of the term. And I'll see you around some other time, all right? Thanks so much for having me. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you so much.